Sutton, Jerry and Ely. Oh, oh and Shivers is in. Took somebody's helmet with it. Hooked off. And it's Jacoby McClay. Are you kidding me? 100 yards. How about this finish? They've got another big one over their arch rival from Tuscaloosa. Welcome to Capital One Bowl Mania. Welcome to the Outback Bowl, a part of Capital One Bowl Mania. Auburn is looking for its 15th 10-win season. They've done it before. Minnesota has 10 wins for the first time since 1905. And we welcome you to 2020 football-wise. Jason Benetti, Rod Gilmore, Quint Kesnick downstairs. Uh, look, the question for both these teams what are you playing for today? Yeah, well, we know Minnesota is motivated. They're having a season for the ages. Knocking off an SEC power would really put a cherry on top of that. What about Auburn? We know a couple of years ago they weren't motivated for Central Florida. They learned a lesson. Everything we hear is that they are focused and that they've changed their routine, and this is a business trip, not a reward. Well, they've got a kid at quarterback in Bo Nix who's building to something. The coaches say he might win them a national championship while he's here, the freshman. Yeah, and he started off right as a legend in week one national stage took care of Oregon with a fourth quarter comeback and then also had big wins near the end of the season one over Alabama some ups and downs in between but he's a guy who can beat you with his arm big plays with his legs as well and they'll need that today He'll face Minnesota, which is a wonderful story this year. Picked last in their division in the Big Ten, but the row the boat mantra has worked wonderfully. Calm seas through the first nine games. Bing, bing, bing. Into the win column. Even that win against Penn State, but the squalls Ooh, came. Storms. Oh, it was ugly. At Iowa, then they beat Northwestern. They run into another white cap with Wisconsin, and now they face number 12 Auburn. But there's a boat in the stadium, so Quint Kesnick is rowing it with P.J. Fleck. Coach, how does the row the boat mantra reveal itself in this game today? Well, we've got to be able to play just with relentless energy. And no matter what happens, just got to be able to stay the course and to find ways to become really explosive and, and play with incredible how. Well, what's the recipe for an upset? Uh, we have to take care of the football. Yeah, that's the first and foremost the thing we have to do. And then we have to be able to get takeaways on defense. And when we get takeaways on defense, we can score a lot of points uh, and can stay within our game plan. And I think that's critical. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate it. Real most game, I'll go Gophers. That was P.J. Fleck on arrival here at the stadium with Quint Kesnick. Minnesota is a wonderful story. Gus Malzahn, last time 10 years ago, Auburn was here in the Outback Bowl at the beginning of the last decade. He was waiting for a fax from Cam Newton. That's how much can happen in one decade. Cam Newton shows up. They win the championship game the following year after the Outback that, Bowl. That's trip. a fax that changed his life. Unquestionably. And we love that the fax machine is still a part of our culture on signing day up yeah, into but, 2020. But, but should it be? Sure. <laughs> I, I like the retro. Goldie's <laughs> ready to go. The Tigers are ready to go. Minnesota's traveled well. So has Auburn. One of the great bowl games on New Year's Day, the Outback Bowl. And the Minnesota Golden Gophers will have it first from the 25-yard line. Tanner Morgan, the redshirt sophomore for these Minnesota Golden Gophers, a terribly accurate passer, an under-recruited young man who came here with P.J. Fleck. He was going to go to Western Michigan. Ends up here at Minnesota. He's won 12 of his last 14 starts, and he's been the driver. He's the blue-collar underdog that everyone wants to root for not the guy that was highly recruited not in the spotlight but he's found his way to success at minnesota and yet again his gophers are underdogs just like early in the season as rodney smith is drilled by kj Britt, the linebacker this is one of the most efficient defenses in the country for auburn i want to get back to tanner morgan in a moment but that first play tells you what Minnesota is up against. It is the speed of Auburn. The outside run, that stretch play, is something that Minnesota, it's bread and butter. But Auburn has a speed to take away the outside run every single down. Auburn 13th in scoring defense in the country. Kevin Steele has done once again a magnificent job. This is an inside run for Smith, who sets up a third down and short for Tanner Morgan. The story you were telling about Tanner Morgan, he got a phone call from P.J. Fleck when P.J. Fleck took the job at Minnesota and said, hey, I'm going to Minnesota. You want to come with me? 
And he said, yep. PJ said, well, you want to come visit first? He said, nope, I'm coming. And, and the answer for this program, it turned out, was Tanner Morgan, who got the job because of an injury to Zach Anikstead, who was presumed to be at least in the competition for the starting quarterback job to start the year. Morgan has enough time, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Javaris Davis. And he's down to the 12-yard line. Just the seventh pick for Morgan all year. The number one play for Minnesota is the run pass option with the slant over the middle. And they've run that all season long. You will see to the left side of your screen, he's looking for the slant, and Davis jumps that slant. Now that is something that Auburn has been practicing against all week long. It is something that Wisconsin did very well against Minnesota. It's something Iowa did well. So you're going to have to see a change from Minnesota. That slant is not going to be available early on because they are sitting on it. The number one pass play for the Gophers and Weeks to look at it as they'll go with the jet sweep for Shivers, who you saw in the open had that wrecking ball touchdown in the Iron Bowl. So many weapons on the outside for Bo Nix and the Auburn Tigers offense, which scores 34 points a game, even against one of the toughest schedules in the country. That schedule was ridiculous. Mm. Unbelievably hard. I mean, every week you're seeing a top 15 team, essentially, for the Auburn Tigers, who, again, as you said, started the season with a win against Oregon. D.J. Williams into the backfield, the young running back who's seen a lot more time recently, and it'll be third down. This is where Bo Nix is a, a dual threat quarterback. He's got a, more than a handful of rushing touchdowns this season. So off of that zone read or speed option, he also has the ability to get to the edge. His favorite target here, Jason, 18, near side. Seth Williams with his height, great height. Yeah, Q, you're right on it. He can do it with his legs here. He can go to that fade route. Right down at the bottom. That's the direction they go. Incomplete. It was Williams the target. Benjamin St. Just was there on the coverage. The Michigan transfer. Now, the Juice plays that very well. He knows what he's doing out there. He is playing him so that he's trying to force the deep throw, the fade. But that's a back shoulder. And because he's in great position for that, he's right there to make that play. And for P.J. Fleck, who said, we've got to start fast. To be able to hold the Tigers oh. to a field goal try here is mammoth. Yeah, that's huge. Anders Carlson from 24. And Auburn does take the lead. 3 nothing Tigers, P.J. Fleck will take it. The Outback Bowl, brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. Hurry in January 2nd for your free Bloomin' Onion or Coconut Shrimp. And Mitsubishi Motors, drive your ambition. One of the wonderful things about bowl games is the opportunity to get out into the community. We saw players and coaches at Tampa General Hospital to bring some holiday cheer. And then Bush Gardens on Saturday. So uh, Auburn and Minnesota traveling well. And the Tigers held to a field goal after the interception in the short field on the opening drive. That's a great defensive start for Minnesota. I mean, that thing was set up to be 7 nothing right away. But to get a field goal out of that, that's, that's got to make the Minnesota coaching staff really happy. Carlson to kick it away to Demetrius Douglas for Minnesota. And once again, the 25 for the Golden Gophers. And go back to the pick here. Yeah, you know, we talked about this RPO run pass option. The quarterback makes the decision after the snap whether to have a run or to throw the ball. Now the, 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 the slant is something that they want. Inside coverage here by Davis. And he backs in, taking away the inside. You see that? He's taking away the inside. And you still have Tyler Johnson trying to run that slant inside. Davis just runs it for Interception in three straight games for Tanner Morgan, which was extremely rare early in the season. The efficiency of this offense 
is high level against a very tough defense. There's a cross for a first down just short of the 40 to Rashad Bateman, who led the team in receiving yards this year. Yeah, come right back with it. Another run pass option, quick slant. Now, Auburn's going to give a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. And as long as those linebackers attack the run action, that slant will be there. That's a good omen for Minnesota. Big Ten receiver of the year, Bateman. Another under-recruited guy out of Tifton, Georgia. And our first flag comes surprisingly against Minnesota, which does not get penalized very much. Ball start. Offense, number 64. Five-yard penalty. Still, first down. It's on Connor Olsen. Minnesota, 38 penalty yards a game. That's top 10 fewest in the country. You know, P.J. Fleck doesn't get enough credit for how he manages a game. His teams play a very clean game. He plays pretty much old school. Defense, special teams, you know, control the clock. Uh, for all of the other modern things that he does, his game management is very old school. Yeah, I was going to say it's in conflict with the deeply psychological yeah. bent he has as a coach. And Morgan rolling out on first down and longer. And he's got a connection up to the 50-yard line to Tyler Johnson, the senior, for 17 and a first down. The one advantage Minnesota has coming into this ball game is they have two incredibly talented receivers on the outside. And no matter how good you are in man-to-man -man coverage, you can't beat great receivers every single play. So Bateman and Johnson are the key to Minnesota getting something done today. They're going to go Wildcat here. Seth Green, the Wildcat quarterback all year long, is going to run power, and he runs right into Owen Popo, the freshman linebacker, now to our Chick-fil-A impact player. On that hard to figure out some of these <laughs> impact players in this ball game. They really have been standing out all season long. You start with Rashad Bateman and Antoine Winfield from Minnesota, too. And Winfield's an All-American. And Seth Williams can go up and get the ball. And Derrick Brown. Everybody's All-American. Likely first-round pick. Actually top 10, top 5 pick in the next draft. Our Chick-fil-A impact players, including, uh, you mentioned, so much talent on that Auburn defensive side. And they've been with the same coaching staff for years as well. Big hole, Muhammad Ibrahim crashing in to Jamie and Sherwood. Gain of 14 and another first down. Now watch the block over here and the edge there. This is where it happens. They do a really good job of handling the tackle and the edge. No Derrick Brown in there on that play. And again, Minnesota is short a little bit on the line with Daniel Fa'alele, the typical right tackle, out. Jake Paulson, the starting tight end, who's a very good blocker, out as well with an injury. And so they run left behind Schluter. Ibrahim again to the second level, past that ultra-talented D-line, and Igbenogany makes the tackle. Now, now let's keep in mind what we've seen so far. New offensive coordinator for Minnesota. They run their two best plays right off the bat. They get stuffed. They come back and start running inside, and then they make something out of it. And then, Q, they are able to get back outside. Yeah, it's been their base offense. It's all based on that inside zone, the RPO game off of that. They have thrown a, a formational wrinkle at Auburn going empty on the first series. But this is just standard Minnesota football. And right now, Auburn's defense a bit on their heels. Even with the new offensive coordinator as Kirk Shiraka is out to Penn State. Moving on to State College, there's a first down for Rodney Smith. But uh, again, Quint says typical Minnesota offense. They're so used to what they do, the recipe's the same. The, the surprise, though, is that they can run that inside zone against this defensive line. We, we didn't think that would be able to happen. Now, Derrick Brown is back in there. Now, they're double teaming him when he's in the game. So that's a bit of an issue for them. But, you know, you still have Marlon Davidson over there. So it, it's, this is a credit to what that line is doing right off the bat. Derek Brown, who was vocal about how much he wanted to play in this bowl game, his final game at Auburn. Some of his defensive He's mates right followed there. him. There he is. Morgan and Brown was in on the tackle. Now Derek Brown is the ringleader. 
and he got almost all of his boys to come back last year when he was a first round projected pick and to play in this ball game there's only one Auburn player Nick Coe who isn't playing in this ball game yeah essentially the Pied Piper said I'm coming back everybody else came with for Auburn so the motivation is to send out the seniors in a strong way but Minnesota is having a very gopher like drive on its second touch of the football. Short gain up the middle. Ibrahim, third down and long. Yeah. Now, when Derek Brown is being doubled and he clogs up that center like that, makes it really, really easy to get your linebackers involved there. And whether it's Papo or Britt, they just run free and make those tackles. Here's an interesting third down now. This is typically where you get Minnesota looking at their RPO. Now, Auburn is a heavy blitz team in this situation, which Minnesota has not seen a lot of. Morgan, short and incomplete. Christian Tutt had the coverage on Johnson. It's fourth down. So that is a drive which should give Minnesota a lot of confidence. You know, the one thing Auburn does, though, they, they tend to tease you with that confidence because only 52% of the time when you get past Auburn's 40, yep. do you score. Well, listen, this is a veteran defense. A lot of seniors, a lot of juniors, a lot of guys that have played a lot of football, and they're, they're patient, and they've got Kevin Steele, who's been coaching for 40 years, telling them, hey, it's a different gay day and age. You will give up some yards. Lance... Sends it on through, and the Gophers have tied the game. But the anchor of the defense, Derek Brown, and the defensive line will be with Clint Kesnick after this. Can you feel that? Tell me about this, this jersey, the elasticity of it, and how small it is. It's like a tank top. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it, it actually keeps it really close to you so nobody won't hold you. Where do they try to hold you? <laughs> Uh, you name it up here. Yeah. They try to pull the jersey off. Usually when we come in the locker room, it's already like over the shoulder pads and taped down. And then head. <laughs> oh man, it's tough. It's tough, tough on your ears when you bring that thing over. <laughs> so that was earlier this year. Have your ears recovered, Quint? They have. They have. You know those jerseys are like a T-shirt. But I couldn't be more impressed with Big Cat and Derek in terms of uh, their sense of humor, their willingness to teach me about, about how they. You know, with the help of uh, two equipment managers, put those jerseys on and then use double sticky tape to make it as tight as possible so they can't be held. You got the understanding of how together of a group that is, though, right? I mean, that's what we hear so much about the Auburn defensive line. You, you guys hit it on the head when, when you called Derek the Pied Piper because you could see that at practice the other day with their senior send-off. He is truly the captain elected. And this is going to be a big return for Igbenogany. Noah Igbenogany is the 96 yards. Well, all it takes is a couple of Minnesota guys out of their lane and watch the key block number 19 right in front of Ig Ignogany, and that's all he needed. Once he got that block, he was off to the races. Minnesota played it as a return to their left, and he went to their right. Grant Ryersee, the kickoff man, had the best shot at him and couldn't make the tackle. Igbenogany... And this special teams unit for Auburn pays off a big touchdown after a grinding Minnesota field goal drive. See it again. Yeah. Just keep your eyes peeled right here. Watch this block open everything up. Oh, I'm sorry, right for 1999. That block. That was the block. It's Matthew Hill. Yeah. The key, wide receiver. Key block. 
You talked about a speed differential, Rod. Showed up on special teams. Yeah. Yeah, Q. You know, you had, you had Minnesota a little bit out of their lanes, and because of Auburn's speed, it didn't take much. That ties an Outback Bowl record for kickoff return touchdown length. And the second one taken to the house by Igben Agony. So Minnesota goes 10 plays, six minutes, four first downs, assembly line drive for three points, and then Auburn takes the top off with a touchdown in an instant on the ensuing kickoff. So now Minnesota has to deal with the deficit and Igben Agony showing the wear and tear of all that went into that 96 yard return. Hey, coming up tomorrow, two great bowl games on ESPN. First up, BC and number 21, Cincinnati, who we saw in the conference, who had, uh, the American Conference Championship game. That's the Ticket Smarter Birmingham Bowl, 3 Eastern, then at 7 Eastern. Indiana looking for their first bowl win since 1991 against they, Tennessee. They are exciting. They can throw the ball around. We had them at Penn State, and they, even without their best playmaker in the game for most of that, had a shot at taking down Penn State. And now the Auburn defense swarms and sets up a second and long off the run from Smith. Yeah, a bit of an issue when you don't double Derrick Brown in there. Now, I think this series we need to see Morgan become the focal point. He, he's got to throw some passes. He's got to get the ball out fast. Getting off a of press has been an issue for some of these outside receivers. Well, we talked to Bateman and Johnson, and they were looking forward to it yesterday in our meetings, trying to maybe get up field. We have not seen that yet for Minnesota's passing offense. Well, the good news is they've moved Johnson into the slot. It's harder to press Johnson when he's in the slot there. Morgan, it's batted away. Roger McCreary, the sophomore from Mobile, sets up third and 11. But this, this Auburn defense, the secondary in particular, they're being very physical. Now Johnson tried to run a double move, tried to run a slant go. And as he tried to do that, he got waylaid by McCreary, number 23. He just held him tut as well. Those guys are doing a good job of being physical. Look at the confidence of Christian oh. Tut. I mean, Kevin Steele, we essentially asked him yesterday, what could go wrong in this game for your defense? And he was very confident in the drive and motivation for his defense, which has been together for so long, looking for essentially a graduation present, as that's nearly intercepted by Daniel Thomas. Yeah. Yeah, forget about having two and a half seconds to get rid of the football. Oh, yeah. You know, that, that's kind of the standard you like, and that's what Minnesota tries. They're not getting that on that third and long. They bring Davis from the edge. A lot of speed, a lot of pressure. Look at 13. Look how fast he's coming. And Minnesota has struggled at quite a few times this year to protect Tanner Morgan anyway, even when they've gotten the ball out fast. They're without Fa'alele and Paulson and yeah. facing the best defense they'll see. Yeah, that's a problem. Minnesota has a fantastic punt coverage unit. And that ball is on the ground, off of Tut, and Minnesota's on it. My goodness. Why try to field that? That's what Gus Malzahn wants to know. Tut's going a long way, and that ball's out in front of him. He's just trying to save yardage, and that's an ill-advised attempt. And it's his senior, Thomas Barber, who recovers it for Minnesota. And when we asked Kevin Steele what could go wrong, he hearkened back to a game when he was at Clemson, had to face some short fields defensively, and this is the type of thing that can gum up the works well, for a top-10 defense. T.J. Fleck said he needs turnovers. I believe this is going to be under further review. We'll check and see if it was indeed touched by Tut when we come back. Being a person is complicated, but we figure it out. In fact, people are always doing impressive things. So how come all these people who do wildly challenging things feel like they can't do their taxes? 
We're talking about a bunch of baby birthing, office discoing, zero gravity tooth brushing, late night chainsaw sculpting, dog walking people. We believe people can be good at anything. Yes, even taxes. Into a TurboTax. Christian Tut muffs the punt. Barber recovers and the call stands. No surprise there. Look at this. He actually does get his hands on it. You can tell by his reaction, too. His fingers yep. curl. Yep. And he looks at it. He knows immediately. And so the call stands as delivered initially. And Minnesota has a short field running its 16th play of the game with 5.19 to go in the first. Morgan pointing to his senior tailback, Rodney Smith. Morgan lets it rip and has Chris Ottman Bell, the sophomore wide receiver. But you can see in Tanner Morgan's mannerisms, he is sensing the pressure with his shoulder movements quickly. Yeah, well, he got some pressure from Marlon Davidson. As soon as he got rid of that ball, he took a hit. Now, it's not always getting the sack. It's just constantly being under duress. You're affecting the quarterback. Davidson gets a hit. You know, Brown's in there knocking him around. Davis comes with a pressure on that last screenplay attempt. So Tanner Morgan is not yet comfortable back there because he's getting harassed. Time this time. And he's got Johnson inside the 20. Tyler Johnson, the Minnesota native, for 17. This is one way to beat press coverage, a crossing route. He comes all the way across the field to run away from the man coverage. That is a good way to help Johnson out. Johnson is not a great change of direction guy. So beating press coverage when he's the outside receiver is a little tougher. Put him in the slot and let him run away from the guy. That's a great adjustment. Humble young man who's going to walk for his diploma coming up in the spring. And he said to us yesterday he did it for his family to be a role model for everybody coming after him, all of his siblings. Abraham, touchdown Gophers! The line does a great job of pushing Davidson three outside and they seal off Brown and create a huge hole in a missed tackle by K.J. Britt. I shouldn't say missed tackle because actually all that happened was Ibrahim ran right through the tackle. Yeah, he kind of put himself in a ball, made yeah. himself small, Maurice Jones-Drew style, yeah. and got himself a rushing touchdown and the extra point good for Lance. Coming up today, 5 Eastern time, the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual. Oregon takes on Wisconsin. Then at 845, Georgia and Baylor together in the All-State Sugar Bowl. Both games also available on the ESPN app, which gives us a chance to look at our hot topics around college football. Brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. Points are not terribly likely, but boy, is it going to be physical. This is the uh, Rose Bowl game and the hot topic. So look, uh, both of these teams, Auburn and Minnesota, have seen Wisconsin and yep. Oregon. Yep. Oregon was the trampoline for Auburn's season. Wisconsin was the one that stood in the way of the Golden Gophers and getting to the Big Ten championship game. Yeah, yeah, and and really kind of put out a roadmap for dealing with Minnesota's offense. Let's see what type of kickoff you see for Minnesota here. You wouldn't imagine they would want to get Igbenogany the ball, and now Auburn's just going to fall on this one. It is the short kick, so they'll go ahead and let him set up shop at the 35 as Britt dives on top of it. So Auburn has run a grand total of three plays for six yards. So who's their quarterback? Yeah, we haven't met him. He's, he's Bo Nix. If you've missed him, uh, 90 seconds he's had the ball so far on a short field kickoff return touchdown. The freshman of the year in the SEC, Bo Nix, such a talented young man. Well, I, I really think you have to admire and respect him and what he's been through. His throw to the outside at the 40-yard line for Anthony Schwartz, who's back and Nix, pretty much healthy. Nix has been in the spotlight since he was a kid. You know, his dad was a quarterback at Auburn. 
He had to live, measure up to that. He was the most decorated. There's Schwartz, Schwartz who goes down. The most decorated high school football player in Alabama history. Played some games there at Jordan Hare and then expected to do great things at Auburn and all he does is win the job as a freshman and plays a big game in his first week. Another quick hitter for Schwartz. When we saw him back in September, it was his first ever game as a collegiate player at Jordan Hare Stadium and now he's here feeling comfortable. But the pressure for living up to all that. Are you as good as your dad was at Auburn? Can you play as well? Can you play at Auburn? The answer is yes. Yeah. He told us he felt really comfortable starting after that Mississippi State game about halfway through the year when it all started to really flow for him. On the ground, nothing there for DJ Williams. What stands out about Knicks on the bench is the, the next play mentality, you know, the next series mentality. He's grown up. He never lost his confidence this year. He never hit the proverbial freshman wall. He's been a sponge asking the right questions. Let's see if he can deliver on this third down. Yeah, you know, we, we talked about Tanner Morgan being the guy that was lightly recruited. That's not Knicks, man. We're talking about a guy, Elite 11 and everything else. He's been under all kinds of pressure as a youngster, and he's handled it well. He's seen a lot of third downs like this. Nick Bales, he can absolutely run, but he is short by a couple of yards, and now will Auburn go for it on fourth down for the 14th time this year? Well, looks like they will. There's Malzahn sending in. Tight ends and Booby Whitlow, yep. potential Wildcat. Remember, Gus Malzahn has called the plays this year. He also lost his offensive coordinator, Kenny Dillingham. Chad Morris is in, watching mostly today. And a flag comes down for a false start. Oh, that's going to change it. Gus Malzahn is pleading his case over on the sideline. Nick's is furious also. Still going to go for it, it looks like. Wow. Got a quarterback pooch punt here if they don't like what they see. I think that's what you're going to get, Q. Yeah, they broke it down. And now we're going to have a timeout, Minnesota. Yeah, they had no one back to receive the punt. Well, if any Alabama fans are watching, we wouldn't imagine so with the Tide playing. But in the Iron Bowl, Auburn pulled some shenanigans with its punt formation well within the law. But Nick Saban wasn't terribly pleased about the whole function. You know, the Nick Saban, Gus Malzahn relationship is interesting. Malzahn is really the only coach who's had any success against Saban. Saban has really dominated everyone else. And he's got, what, two or three wins against him in his tenure there at Auburn. Does Gus Malzahn and P.J. Fleck, by the way, have an interesting relationship, too. The two coaches in our game have a lot of admiration from for one another and they, they, separately outside of a game like this they are friends they uh, joked around a little bit here today and now P.J. Fleck doing some calisthenics but telling him to talk as Bo Nix going to come off the field they're going to punt. Auburn has struggled mightily this year on punt coverage. Demetrius Douglas back to receive for the Gophers. And this ends up out of bounds. Good kick from Sipos. Start right at the 10. Wild card weekend starts in the NFL with our game on ESPN and ABC Saturday, 435 Eastern. Josh Allen and the Bills take on Deshaun Watson and the AFC South champion Texans from NRG Stadium in Houston. Coverage starts with postseason NFL countdown 3 Eastern also on the ESPN app. Do you remember Buffalo playing a team from Houston in the postseason back in the day they had a little oil rig on their helmets and Buffalo went down like a thousand and had one of the greatest comebacks in football history. Warren Moon? Moon? Warren Moon, Webster Slaughter, the whole bunch and uh, Frank Reich and the Bills with the comeback. We'll see if it happens again. 
Ibrahim across the 20 into Thomas, the safety. So Minnesota having success running up the middle over the guard. Well, you, you know, since that touchdown, you come back with this one, they're doing a good job of doubling Brown inside. And because Davidson is getting up the field, they're letting him go the way he wants to go. And they're pushing him that way and then running back inside. Minnesota sixth in the country in time of possession. They've had the ball for very much the balance of this first quarter. Ibrahim shook by one tackle from Zacoby McLean, and Davis finally got him. Here comes Brown again, trying to amp up the troops with some energy. Well, you know, this running to the outside, throwing screens, all this stuff is tough on big guys. You know, it can get them a little winded. Auburn trying to make sure they get Brown a little rest when they can. And he's getting doubled every time. He's working hard because Minnesota has targeted him as the guy they need to stop. They're not wrong. Morgan floats it and incomplete. The tight end, Brevin Span Ford, just slipped out of his chip, and it'll be third down. That pressure was brought by Denson, the free safety. Minnesota doesn't see an, an awful lot of pressure, you know, in these situations. They've been blitz pressure 41% of the time. That's, you know, more than most Big Ten teams. But in the third down and six range, teams typically played coverage against them. Auburn doesn't believe in that. Auburn will get after you. Well, Kevin Steele is an aggressive play caller defensively. Down there, there is the matchup. Bateman has got to beat press coverage. McCreary down there with him, and another timeout time for P.J. Fleck in Minnesota. Minnesota. Their second charge, timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. So, look, P.J. Fleck wanted a fast start for Minnesota. Got that? Uh, he got it in a yeah. way, right? Yeah. I mean, they go down, but they withstood both big punches, the interception and the kick return touchdown. Yeah, well, the thing that's really impressed me so far, though, is the way that the offensive line has handled two first-round picks in that yeah. Auburn defensive line. Brown and Davidson have been neutralized so far in this ballgame, so a lot of confidence for the Minnesota offensive line. What they haven't been able to do is to get either Bateman or Johnson to consistently beat press coverage. And until that happens, their passing attack is going to be restricted. It's amazing with this Auburn team, right, to have so many seniors on a defense who have been coached by the same defensive yep. line coach, same defensive coordinator. It speaks yep. to the culture Steele and Malzahn have created to keep all those guys together. But plucky Minnesota is giving them all they want in 21 plays in the first quarter. Empty formation. Is the pressure coming? If it is, it's coming from the field. It's creeping up there. Morgan moves in a blocker. And this is Bateman off the catch, and he is doused immediately. He was absolutely surrounded. Javaris Davis, who had the pick, makes the stick. Well, something didn't go right because Brown got in there in a hurry like they were trying to let him through with the screen pass, but they didn't really set it up as a screen pass. It was a great swim move. The first quarter. Minnesota and Auburn in an entertaining back and forth first quarter, 10-10 after one. What's next? coverage provided by Goodyear recognizing those who strive to rise above the rest Goodyear more driven welcome back to the Outback Bowl a part of Capital One Bowl mania and mania is the operative word for this game so far Auburn has 10 points but has run eight plays in the first quarter and we'll get the ball back after this Minnesota punt Gopher is a 10 win season Auburn going for win number 10. Christian Todd, who muffed a punt earlier, still back there. And he fair catches this one and secures it at the 32. So Bo Nix, the freshman from Pinson Valley High School, he played for his dad, the former Auburn quarterback there. He's got 25 yards, which looks 
pretty small, but it's only because he just hadn't seen the ball much. I, I think that's right. You know, Auburn goes into the game, every game, looking for nine explosive plays, plays of 20 yards or more. They have zero. They go in looking for 13 possessions. They've only had two so far, so they're not on track with the way they like to play. Nix whips it far side and batted away. Incomplete for Seth Williams, who he threw a jump ball to earlier. Now, the, the thing about Nix is that his passing has been sort of inconsistent. He, has, he throws a great deep ball, a great back shoulder. It's the routine play. He'll make the spectacular play for you. I expect next season that his completion percentage will jump up from 57% to around 65 once again, he goes for Schwartz, and he's got the first down. Uh, make no mistake, the Auburn coaches feel like Bo Nix is the type of guy who can lead them to a national championship. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. He's got all the skills that they love. Now, Chad Morris is going to help him with that consistency. Gus Malzahn you know, candidly admits that. The routine play, putting the ball directly where the receiver needs it to keep a drive alive, is the critical stuff. That one. Williams the catch and trying to run. He's tripped up. Those last two throws, those are the things that Bo Nix will be expected to deliver next year on a regular basis. So that completion percentage is much higher. And it should be somewhere around 65, 68%. On the road, not as good this year. Neutral side, home, comfort zone, pretty good. Cam Martin on the run. Third down on the way for Auburn. Minnesota's corner so far. Rodder playing off. They're kind of conceding the underneath stuff. They've done a good job tackling one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. If I'm Auburn, you know, the, the lack of a bread-and-butter run game so far has got to be a little concerning here. Yeah, Q, I think that means that Knicks is going to have to do more with his legs today than maybe originally planned. Here's a little wildcat for you. Couple of tosses, Nix ends up with it. Bo Nix scrambling and throwing, and it's incomplete. Minnesota holds the line. Gus Malzahn thought about going for it from this spot earlier. And on fourth down and three, Willie again. Isn't it kind of hard to do that when you pull out your trick play and your trick play doesn't work? You, you want to come back and run a conventional play? Yeah, it seems a little backward, yeah. but you're, you're kind of left with that situation because you don't want to get the ball again with like five minutes left in the second quarter <laughs> the way Minnesota's been driving it. They'll bring in the couple of tight ends, Shanker and Nye, and maybe that punt that Quint was talking about, and they will boot it with Bo Nix. And he drops in an absolute marvel inside the 10 yard what line can he do well he said he played cornerback in high school he wanted to play wide receiver a little bit he's a punter now i've lost two homes in my lifetime both times my independent agent and auto owners took care of me like someone takes care of family for whatever lies ahead we're always there auto owners insurance Lovely Tampa Bay, which was jumping on New Year's Eve last night. 34th year of this game, 25th year of Outback as the title sponsor of the Outback Bowl. Auburn's defense getting neutralized a little bit. Yeah, that offensive line has hit on something. They're letting Davidson, that first round tick potentially, do what he wants. He wants to go upfield, go upfield. They are running away from him, and they're able to double team Brown inside, so they're finding gaps this way. Run away from Davidson, let him go where he wants to. And if you can double team Brown, you got some running lanes. And guess what? 68 yards rushing already for Minnesota. Morgan pulls it and lets it rip to the far side for Tyler Johnson. Quint, that the biggest surprise to you so far? Yeah, how Minnesota's offensive line is handling the Auburn front. And how Matt Simon, their interim offensive coordinator, has really called a, a smart game, an efficient game. You know, Kirk Soraka taking the job at Penn State. 
For years, he was uh, the sidekick of P.J. Fleck and the offensive coordinator responsibility. And Simon calling his first game of his career. Minnesota fans were not happy about his leaving before this bowl game. Soraka, that is, going elsewhere in the Big Ten. As Smith has the first down. But look, uh, the receivers we talked to yesterday, they said the key word that... Simon uses is aggressive with them aggressive aggressive live every day aggressively essentially win the day and he's calling an efficient smart uh, restrained game so far well he's not wrong that's right yeah live it aggressively why not they're both uh, accurate yeah his story is very similar to PJ Fleck a wide receiver at Northern Illinois played in the NFL I mean you talk about an overachiever left-hander he was out early and awfully excited for this opportunity Another broken tackle for Ibrahim to set up second down for Minnesota's rushing offense, which is more than halfway to Auburn's typical total they give up at 115 a game. There you see eight and a half yards of carry for Ibrahim, and Davidson's still on the sideline. Body punches on a warm day. Bowl season, you've had some time off. What's your conditioning level as a defender? They've asked a lot of this defensive front in terms of plays and time on the field. Morgan, once again, Tyler Johnson, first down. And Tyler Johnson is an outstanding story. We told you about him getting his degree soon here in Minneapolis. But he goes to Minneapolis North High School, and he is a young man. How about that triple team on Brown? When you talk about a day and how much work he's putting in, Minnesota is going after him. Yeah, Johnson, I mean, this kid essentially helped his high school stay open. He won a basketball championship in the state for North High School. And they revere him there. This offense has been outstanding in the first half as Rodney Smith barrels down the field for a 30-yard game. And this is that, that stretch play, the play that they weren't sure they'd be able to run to get to the edge. Now they got it going. They've been running the inside zone doing it well and now they're able to go back outside with Rodney Smith and Auburn Auburn doesn't have control of anything up front right now pump and go maybe here comes Davidson Morgan flushed and he lets it go he waited long enough for Ottman Bell to clear but it's incomplete he was out of bounds as Chris Ottman Bell tried to tightrope it. I thought Morgan was going to take off there. I thought he had a little bit of room to run on a first down play and pick up some good yardage. But he is such a disciplined quarterback. He looks down the field all the time and he knows his playmakers can do more than he can. Isn't he a guy that you, you root for because of his background and he's such a a blue collar guy and you know as he says he walks into the room he's he's just a guy he's another one of those guys on the long list of people they said hey maybe not the size to play quarterback maybe not the big time peripherals and all of that I mean he was as you said he was going to Western Michigan PJ Fleck calls and says come to Minneapolis he's having this party his, his farewell party which is Kalamazoo stuff Bronco stuff all over the living room and he's got to tell everybody who comes in hey uh, actually we're going to wear different colors sorry about it his mother had ordered cookies with a W for Western Michigan smart woman she just turned them upside down yeah for Minnesota W becomes an M and that's the ballad of Tanner Morgan's farewell party from high school in Kentucky screen pass far side Bateman sneaks through. Rashad Bateman inside the five. Perfect call in that situation. They come with the screen, expecting pressure, and the blitz comes. And then watch Bateman, that explosive first step. He runs through tackles. Guys had angles. He ran by them with his speed. So explosive. 
There's a level of confidence for these receivers after what they've done this year beating Penn State getting to nine and oh. That Minnesota has not seen for a long time with a group. Go the other way. Johnson touchdown. He did get in gymnastically. Let's see, did he get in? Ball has to break the plane, not Johnson, the ball. Hmm. Very close. Very close. Remember, the call on the field is touchdown. So you need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field. It has to be clear that the ball didn't ball break the, the plane. Is a touchdown. Let's watch as we zoom the in. They are going to go to review. And again, it's just a piece of the football that's got to cross the line. I don't know, Rod. I don't know isn't good enough to that's overturn right. it. Yeah. That's usually the sign that stands yeah. would come if the answer is I don't know. Jeremiah Dinson got into him on the tackle to flip him over. All you need again you is need a piece is of break. the football. Yep. Just a little bit of it. Listen, wh while we have a moment, this is not about Auburn not being into this game or focused Correct. for this game. So this is not a couple years ago. Everything we've seen with Auburn in practice, everything we've heard from the coaches and the players, their whole approach to bowl games changed after Central Florida. Yeah, this is this is a work trip. You can, you can have the beach when you have the beach. The, the reward is winning is yep. the way Gus Malzahn put it to us. But look, P.J. Fleck has done remarkable things just psychologically with this team. It, it, it's so together of a group when you watch them in practice. But it, it's taking the country a hard, long time to believe and buy into what he's building at Minnesota. And if, if they win this game, it'll take less time for more people to understand what P.J. Fleck has done. And th again, this is an Auburn team that could have been a college football playoff team. They played as tough a schedule as anybody and hyper-talented, very well coached, running into this North Midwest buzzsaw. Well, unless there is something else that the replay officials are looking at a different angle. Now they've already spot the ball on the, on the three yeah. inch line. Yeah, okay. So they had an angle that convinced them that he wasn't in. After further review, the ball carrier's elbow was down at the one half yard line when the ball was also at the one half yard line. It will be second down. Well, we have an idea of how many Gopher fans have joined us in <laughs> stadium for this game with the booing that just rained down on Tampa Bay. But it'll be second down and goal and another opportunity. Look at Derek Brown trying to charge up the troops. Tanner Morgan has gone to the far side. Green is in as the Wildcat quarterback. And he is a big guy. Power against power, we'll see. 240 pounds. It goes directly to Rodney Smith. And Smith rapping on the door. He's in. Touchdown, Minnesota. Let's see if it stands this time. 92 yards in about five minutes. It would be their second longest scoring drive of the year. Let's did, see. Did he get in cleanly? When is he down? There's oh. an elbow. Where's the ball? I think he's short again. Yeah, Rod. I don't think he's in there. No. Oh no. No. He's at, he may have lost half a, a yeah. quarter of a yard. I, I agree. That elbow was down, and he, the ball did not break the plane. So quick polling by our ESPN.com staff Rule says. On the field is a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. Quick polling, very quick exit polling says the state of Minnesota is against instant replay <laughs> in 2020. Just very quick polling. Look, I. I think a lot of people are starting to have concerns about instant replay, particularly when you slow things down to frame by frame. 
because it distorts things. Now, like we, the Clemson Ohio State game. We, we only have one definitive study out there from the University of Chicago about what happens when you slow things down. They did a study and started in the criminal justice Whoa, system yeah. looking at intent and then moved to athletics. And they discovered that there is a distortion factor when you go frame by frame. So, that applies to targeting only. That does not apply to goal lines and first down lines where you need slow motion to more closely look at it. Yeah, I think that's the point. A lot of people, no, no, that, that's exactly the point that you two are discussing is that folks say either replay or not. That's not necessarily true. It's right. do it right for the right plays sure. at the right exactly. time. So exactly. for, for example, you know, we had the, the Clemson Ohio State play, the incomplete pass, you know, which scoop and score follow. And that was over overturned. Game changing play. When it should have stood. Looks like they've spotted the ball again. Feel and, like Groundhog Day, although that's a gopher, not a groundhog. And and that play should, as you said, should have stood, and Ohio State had every reason to be upset that it didn't. After further review, the ball carrier's left elbow was down while the ball was at the one foot yard, one foot line, will be third down. Now the Auburn roars overwhelm the Minnesota booing in the crowd. This is fun. This atmosphere is really enjoyable today. Well, at our hotel, there were Auburn and Minnesota fans. And as we walked around, they'd stop you. Are you from Auburn? Yeah. Are you from Minnesota? Sorry, we're neutral. Flag. And this is a noisy end zone, too. Auburn band right in Illegal the corner. substitution. Defense. 12 players lined up in formation. Half the distance to the goal. Still third down. The best penalty you could ever want if you're Gus Malzahn and Kevin Steele, though, because you get about an eighth of a yard for Minnesota. Well, I don't think there's any question that this is four down territory for Minnesota. Oh, with how aggressive they want to be? Yep. This has got to be time for Seth Green to carry the ball. 6'4", 240. Green it is. Green driven back. He is short. Auburn walls up and sets up a fourth and goal. Well, listen, you can't run at Brown. He made a tremendous play, destroying guys in front of him to get the green. Tremendous effort by the Auburn defense. Looks like P.J. Flex going to use a timeout here. His left guard, Connor Olsen, had to come out of the game after losing his helmet. He had a blood, a nose full of blood. And so this timeout will allow Coach Fleck to put Olsen back in the game if he can play. Q, all I know is that you're the last guy with the chalk. You do not run at Derrick Brown down there. You have the ability to change and run away from him. You run at him, you got a problem. We'll see what Minnesota chooses. Fourth and goal when Time we come back. Half. Minnesota, their third and final timeout of the half. Bus, Bryce with him, touchdown Minnesota. Seth Green to Bryce Witham, touchdown Gophers. Fake the run and fake the block and all by himself. A nice, easy pass by Morgan. And Minnesota's up. Auburn got a stand for three straight plays. The extra point for Lance is good. And Minnesota takes the lead. Goldie is thrilled. I've lost two homes in my lifetime. Both times, my independent agent and auto owners took care of me like someone takes care of family. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. The Outback Bowl, brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? 
Clearwater Beach, beautiful, a little cloudy, but such a lovely atmosphere. And this bowl game treats everybody so wonderfully here in Tampa. Again, 34th year of the bowl game, 25th year for Outback. And for Bryce Witham, his fourth career catch is his first this year and his first career touchdown. So they're without Jake Paulson. He steps in and scores. You know the game plan for, for Auburn, though. Hey, that 85 guy when he's over there, don't worry about it. He's yeah. just a blocker. Well, they're not wrong at that point. As here is Shivers on the return across the 35. And John Brickley is in the studio. Hi, Brick. Happy 2020. Find your rhythm, your happy place. Find your breaking point. Then break it. Every emergency gives you a potent blend of nutrients so you can emerge your best with emergency. Auburn fans feel a little better than an Alabama deficit as that is clipped by Barber. Thomas Barber, the senior, sets up second and long. He has been such a massive force for that defense. What's a Minnesota game without a Barber name involved? That family has been involved with Minnesota football for a long, long time, and that senior linebacker just made a heck of a play. Dad played in the late 70s, early 1980. Brother Marion, tremendous running back as well, had an NFL career that you certainly remember as Seth Williams has to 360 and gets dropped behind the original line of scrimmage and it's third down. This is a huge play in this game. Looks like is that Coney Door, 16 and white, down on the turf, the cornerback. He's had an outstanding season. But this drive is critical for Auburn. So Durr is down third and long for Nix, who's only run 15 Time plays out. when we come back. I've lost two homes in my lifetime. Both times, my independent agent and auto owners took care of me like someone takes care of family. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Stream your favorite sports, stories, and series with ESPN Plus, Disney Plus, and Hulu. Get all three for just $12.99 a month. Third down and long for Auburn, which Minnesota has kept in check offensively. The one thing that Knicks has to do is stay away from that All-American safety, Winfield, number 11. Seven picks this year for Antoine Winfield, Jr. He's hanging back, lurking, looking. Carter Coughlin coming, couldn't get off the block. Nick sends it downfield. He's got the tight end, Spencer Nye. His second grab of the year, and it's first down, Auburn. Big play. We talked about Nix and his ability to make things happen, to make the big play. Extended that play with his legs. Now Booby Whitlow. Auburn just has never had a rhythm offensively so far in this game as Barber gets a stop. No rhythm, only 17 plays, but this play here. Now, more than 85% of Nix's throws are outside the hash. He likes to escape to the right as well. So that was normal and comfortable for him and smart not to have a freshman quarterback throw over the middle of the field because, you know, the middle of the field is dark and full of terrors. Full of terrors. Yes. Full of terrors, even in 2020. Linebackers and safeties. They'll go with the wide receiver. Uh, jet sweep there, Shivers, to set up third down. So they use so many tailbacks. They have so much motion, motion receivers, running backs, and Shivers sets up the third down. You know, Minnesota has handled all of the eye candy that Auburn has thrown at them so far. All the shifting, all the motion, and the idea behind all that eye candy is to make the defense freeze and think and forget about their assignment and not know their next assignment. Here comes a blitz. Look for a little dump off to the running back. 
Sorry, Marin is coming. And Nick spins it out incomplete for Will Hastings. That's the replacement for Kamal Martin, Mariano Sori Marin from Mokina, Illinois, who brought the pressure straight up the eyes of Knicks. Yeah, Minnesota is not a heavy blitz team. Good timing there by them to bring that. Good anticipation by Knicks to get it out there, but not much you can do. No man's land again. They're going for it. Yep. Fourth down for Auburn. Again, Knicks has to be aware of Antoine Winfield sitting right there father 14 years in the NFL he's a ball hawk timeout. and a timeout Auburn, Auburn. Gus Their Malzahn first, wants to half. talk it over 30 second timeout Winfield reads things very very well you know he has two years of eligibility left but he can come out for the draft and hasn't made up his mind about that but we saw him early early this year and we could tell in week one week two he was going to have an all-american type season best yes. smile he's got the all-american smile best yeah. we've seen this year he, he smiles about himself smiling i mean it's double counting it's he's an awesome young man you can tell the, the pedigree of his dad and don't forget monday january 13th college football playoff national championship game presented by at&t joe burrow and lsu against trevor lawrence and clemson at the mercedes-benz superdome in new orleans 8 eastern on espn and the espn app we talked about this auburn defense they had great success more than anybody else against lsu yeah this I, year. I i watched that tape a couple of times and you know, auburn played lsu well enough to win that game their defense really played well Fourth down and five for Auburn's offense. Freshman Bo Nix, free runner coming. He got by Coughlin, wings it downfield, and a wide open Sal Canella touchdown. A couple of years ago, he was a preferred walk-on in junior college. Now here at Auburn, he scores in his final game. Well, we told you he likes to escape to his right. Don't attack the upfield shoulder. He gets out there, and the middle of the field does not scare Bo Nix. Such a great ad-libber. Very young in his collegiate football career. Auburn's longest play of the day from scrimmage goes for a touchdown to Canella. When you find a quarterback who can handle the pressure and make the big plays, you know you can work with everything else. This John Burke's finest, Sal Canella. Yeah, like Gus Malzahn says, Bo Nix will win a national championship. There's Sal Canella. You see him get past the initial chunk, chuck that the linebacker gave him and just slips in between the safeties. Everyone ignored him. Because of the rollout by Knicks. Knicks with his eyes down the field. Man, he can make the big play. Two plays on that drive. The conversion to Knicks and the touchdown. The ability to extend plays. Yep. Minnesota's bringing some heat with Carter Coughlin. Yep. Knicks so cool, though. Hard to believe he's a freshman. Yeah. You know, it's amazing that you know Minnesota is all over the notion that Knicks likes, likes to escape to his right and that they have to go upfield so you can't let him get around you. But each time on this drive, he was able to get around them. They didn't go to the upfield shoulder for him, and so he made big plays. We got big plays today. Each team has a fourth down touchdown on its last possession to tie the game at 17. Douglas back to receive, and they'll take it at the 25. This season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. What a game this has been. Yeah. First meeting ever between Minnesota and Auburn. And how often do you see two Power 5 teams that just have not gotten together before? But they should do it again if it's anything like this one so it's, far. It's unusual, and we have you know, the best players out there for these teams because Auburn's guys who had a chance to say, I'm going to step aside and wait for my NFL day, they're playing all but one, Nick Coe. And that's every player's individual decision. Absolutely. They're welcome to make yep. their own choice. Yep. 
Some people come back, some people don't. Rodney Smith puts the shoulder down to the 28. We have approximately 25 players who chose not to play in bowl games and scores of others who decided to play. And I think you and I are in agreement. Those are individual choices for each person to decide what the cost, benefit, what the risk is for them, what they value, what they want to do. And whatever their choice is, is fine. And we shouldn't be critical. Particularly, we're not too critical of coaches who decide to leave and not finish a season with their team. Yeah, that's right. It's individual choice, and you're not necessarily a bad teammate because right. you've decided to pursue all of the money that comes along with the NFL, but you're not dumb for wanting to play with your team in a final game as big as this one either. Tanner Morgan going for a deep shot. We haven't seen that today, and it's incomplete. Looking for Bateman down the edge. That was great cornerback play, squeezing Bateman to the sideline. Now, Bateman's job is to make sure that he gives his quarterback enough room to drop that ball in. But he can't because in the Ogany does a good job of squeezing and forcing him to the sideline. Great track and field man, Noah Igbenogany. Talented athlete. There's Brown, the big guy in the middle. They'll run. And get the first down with Ibrahim. Third and long run. Is a tendency for Minnesota. Yeah, double team on Davidson inside. Opened up a huge running lane. They're doing such a terrific job. I'm sure they're running the ball much better than they expected they would in the first half of this game. Morgan surveying. Morgan for Johnson who goes to the high point and climbs the mountain at the 30-yard line. It's a gain of 29. Great pass protection for Morgan. Gave him plenty of time to find Johnson in the middle of the field. Look at that. How about Johnson going up high to get that? Post pattern. Well, look, he went to Minneapolis North High School. He played for the Polars. That was their mascot. So it fits that he would go to the very top of the world to make a play in his final game. I like that. Thank you. First down for Minnesota. Rodney Smith is drilled. Igbenogany blasted it. Yeah, only a, a matter of time before Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator, says, you know what? I'm going to add something here. I'm going to add a little bit of pressure. I'm going to bring a corner blitz. I'll bring safety blitzes. Q, you like that? Oh, yeah. He's got to turn up the heat with, with really how surprising it's been that they haven't been able to stop the run with their four up front. And now we're seeing Minnesota operate at a glacial pace here. I'm going to try to end this half with a, a field goal attempt or a couple shots in the end zone. Remember, Auburn does get the ball at a halftime. Could be a key drive for the Gophers. Clock winding down on Morgan. And they will run once again. Ibrahim sneaks through, invites contact, and pinballs out of bounds. Oh, muscle from Ibrahim into Thomas. Watch what happens over here. There's your big time defensive end that they actually turn Davidson inside and create a lane. For Ibrahim, this offensive line has played remarkably in this first half. Auburn gives up 115 yards on the ground per game. They've allowed 135 before halftime here in the Outback Bowl. Multiple tight ends again. Rodney Smith through the car wash and just short of the 10. And he's running so hard. Falling forward, being physical. P.J. Flex says it's like having a grandfather on the field with how well he knows this team and this offense and what kind of teammate he is. Well, he's been around for a while, and he's a guy that you root for because he tore his ACL in 2018, set out, and is finishing up with a terrific season and a terrific individual year. 
Tanner Morgan loads it up, throws the slant, and has a first down and goal to Tyler Johnson once again. They got the slant back. That is bread and butter for Minnesota. The slant route and the outside zone, that stretch play. Now they're rushing to the line. Not necessarily a need to do that. Morgan, end zone. That would have been a wild grab for Johnson, but he was out of bounds. Oh, no! They say touchdown! Unreal if he got that foot in. Oh, I don't know about that. That would be totally outrageous. If he did that, oh my goodness. Sports Center top play. You kidding me? No way he gets his foot down. The crowd reacted to the replay. Let's see. Oh, is look at that. Is the toe on the line or it's, is it? He's got green the there. Is a catch for a touchdown. The previous play. From this he's angle, the there is green. Toe. Ball green. Wow. Complete control? Yeah. Or is that ball moving around? That's the other question. That's, that's a one-handed catch there. Well, he didn't catch it clean the first time. You'll see it hits his hand and then he re-catches it. Uh, he, his foot is still in green as he comes down there. Before the right foot is in on the green and before the left foot goes to the orange out of bounds, he has control. So to me, Q, the only issue is whether he's in bounds there. And it looks from this angle that it is. And remember, the call on the field is, is touchdown. So we need evidence to overturn that's indisputable. Yep. Will this Auburn get the amazing. replay overturn hat trick in the end zone? Now, right foot down, control. Now, does the toe squeak over the line there as it's, I mean, that is. It, it should be indisputable. And that. Well, see, now there on that look, it doesn't look like there's as much green as we saw in the first place. It's, that's very difficult. And this is that, that part of slowing things down to frame by frame that can distort things a little bit. Look, that was a heck of a play. And I think the call on the field was the right call. We'll see what replay says. Yeah. Maybe we just go too far with replay. Well, on a score on a scoring play, a lot of people would say you gotta you gotta get that right though. So I, I understand but, the but, point of it. But but is it right if we really squeeze frame by frame? Yeah, that, that's the question. And again, you know, if you had a camera in the wall behind the end zone for that one specific play, obviously that changes the function as well. But we'll see what they say from instant replay. Again, ruling on the field is a touchdown for Tyler Johnson, who as a senior has done so much and been through coaching changes and all of that. Is it clear to you that he was out of bounds? Uh, no, I mean, your point is valid. It should stand based on what we've seen. Right. Yeah. Let's see. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Tyler Johnson catch. with one of the most remarkable catches you're going to see in any bowl season. That was shocking. The only people who thought he caught that for a touchdown in the moment were him, maybe Tanner Morgan, and possibly the very positive P.J. Fleck. It was the combination of the leaping with the one hand and getting the foot down. It was so sudden and so shocking. Extra point is good. Minnesota has run up 289 yards of offense as there is a flag down on the extra Offside. point. Defense, that penalty is declined. The point is good. 24-17 and coming up on our Mercedes-Benz halftime report, we will check in with the other SEC Big Ten game, Alabama and Michigan, and then preview the Rose Bowl as well. Wisconsin and Oregon coming up. Are you as stunned as I am? Because this is one of the best defenses in the country, and Minnesota has had its way with them. Now, now I'm not saying that we didn't expect Minnesota to be in the ballgame, the surprise is the way the Minnesota offensive line has manhandled 
arguably the best defensive line in college football. Yeah, I, 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 but with P.J. Fleck and his belief that he learned from Jim Tressel about clock management and grinding the clock down and, and bleeding teams out on the offense into the defense, he's kept the Auburn defense on the field for long enough to make fatigue a factor even for seniors who are well-conditioned like Brown. He's made Auburn uncomfortable. He's made the defense uncomfortable by, by doing what you said. He's made their offense uncomfortable because they haven't had as many plays. So 32 seconds for Auburn and two timeouts. We'll see what they do. Coming up tomorrow, two more great games on ESPN. BC, Cincinnati, the ticket smarter, Birmingham Bowl at 3 Eastern. Then at 7 Eastern, Indiana and Tennessee in the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl in Jacksonville in North Florida. Both games are on ESPN and on the ESPN app. Uh, hey, look. If you're Auburn, are you going to try and drive it here with 32 seconds? You do get the ball back out of halftime. Oh, I don't think they can afford to just sit on it right now. Their fans that are sitting here in the stands would boo. Knicks check down to the 25 and Will Hastings. The, the one thing that Auburn hasn't been able to get done offensively, they haven't been able to get the ball to their speed guys and time take out. advantage Auburn. of that their speed time out of the half. advantage that they have. Out. You know, Schwartz on the crossing routes. You know, Shivers out of the backfield. You know, let those guys run a little bit. They really haven't been able to do that. They, they haven't had the ball much. Well, I mean, 21 it, yeah. plays. It's got to be difficult as a play caller to find that groove, that wheelhouse where it's just clicking and coordinators talk about that all the time where they just kind of forget their calling plays and it just is in you it's hard hard to do with 21 plays twice as many plays more than twice the time of possession you know Gus Malzahn scripts his first 10 plays and he says he goes in at halftime and they look at what you know Minnesota did and he'll come out in the second half with a shorter script of three or four plays that he wants to run right off the bat Kind of tick some things off. New call sheet yep. in the second half. Nicks, the freshman. Wheels out of the pocket and gets sacked. Boye Mafe, the redshirt sophomore. Yeah, when, when you study the tape and you study the numbers, you know that Nicks is not as effective when he moves to his left out of the pocket. And that is how the first half ends in Florida. Halftime score, Minnesota 24, Auburn 17. The Mercedes-Benz Halftime Report after this. This is Capital One Bowl Mania. Welcome back to the Outback Bowl, a part of Capital One Bowl Mania. Here in Florida, we knew we had two well-coached teams. We knew we had two class programs, but we didn't expect necessarily that Minnesota, though it's had a great season, would be up by seven at halftime here in the Outback Bowl 2020. Welcome back in, Jason Rod, Quint downstairs. Uh, look, you never know what you're going to get in bowl games. Right? Tendency breakers, a lot of time to think about it, motivation. Stuff like this happens. Yeah, this is not about lack of motivation. I think both these programs were plenty motivated for this ball game. Minnesota has controlled this game. They've made Auburn uncomfortable. They've made them uncomfortable on offense because they haven't had the ball. So Auburn has only run nine plays rushing. Only nine rushing plays for Auburn. That is not their style. Gus Malzahn came in saying, we're going to run the ball an awful lot. They've had 22 plays in the first half. That's not a comfort space for them. And on the other side of the defense, you expected that defensive line to dominate. But they've been tired, too, because they've been on the field for 43 plays. And Minnesota has run them from sideline to sideline and run the ball effectively. It's not a shock to anybody in Big Ten country that Minnesota would play well, though. Let, right. Let's not let's not say this is that much of a surprise because Minnesota is a great football team. They've right. got 10 wins 
Auburn's one of the toughest teams they've seen all year. As yeah. you take a look at what Tyler Johnson did yeah. in the first half, this senior has been outstanding. Who's showing up presented by the Peloton app? It's number six. Yeah, he's working. Initially, they had him a little press coverage. They moved him inside to the slot. He got away from people. And this touchdown catch, my goodness. The body control, one-handed catch, gets the foot down. Yeah, he's working. Seven catches, 93 yards, and a touchdown. And look, he won a high school basketball state championship at Minneapolis North. Basically, as the story goes, the school was on the verge of possibly closing, and, and Tyler Johnson helped keep it open. Rashad Bateman, his teammate, called him, quote, Savior Ty, King of the North. He's the pride. Yesterday. He's the pride of, you know, that north side of Minneapolis. And that means a lot to him. Quint. Gus Malzahn just told me flat out, we just have to play more inspired. Uh, joined by a little friend here. We got to play more inspired. And, and when you look at their lack of success on the ground, I think that's what stood out. You know, perhaps Bo Nix becomes more of a running threat in the second half. The other thing you think about their offensive tackles, they're both seniors. They're both going to all-star games. They have not been able to control the edge in any way. And then Seth Williams, two receptions, only four targets. This was a guy who had a great year. He had 55 catches. He's averaging 80 yards a game. Uh, he has been unproductive in this game. But according to the coach, it starts with, with the will, the motivation, the inspiration. He's got to start seeing an edge and some energy and some fight from his Tigers. You're like David Copperfield. You made Goldie disappear with your graphic, by the way, Quint. That was very impressive. Look at Auburn's first half. Yeah, that, that is, that's awful. You know, keep away. Minnesota's been playing keep away. And that's the story of the season for P.J. Fleck and the Gophers, who are 10 and 2. There's Goldie. He's okay. He, he, Quint didn't completely make him disappear. Good to see. Always happy. Goldie's got a smile on his face. P.J. Fleck. Oh, I thought you were talking about Q. Uh, mostly always happy. happy. Yeah. yeah. Trying to trying to cut back. Quint on the happy. I, I thought he looked good with those defensive linemen in that that shirt. Yeah, it was it was a good fit for him. Kind uh, of intimidating with all those monsters around him. When one man's arm is bigger than another man's waist, <laughs> we've got issues. <laughs> We have a whale of a second half coming as they will bounce it instead of letting Igbenogany field it after his touchdown earlier. This is Shanker on the return. John Samuel Shanker, the tight end, to the 31-yard line. So Bo Nix, the freshman of the year in the SEC. Nine for 13 for 105. Does not allow the opportunity to see the football. Yeah, this is a huge drive for Auburn. You know, they've put things up on the board. They've come out with a new short script of plays, things that they expect to work. Their confidence will increase if they do work. On first down, D.J. Williams up the gut. About halfway to the marker, second down, and we didn't see a whole lot of the Auburn rush game. Five rush yards in half number one. Yeah, I think you'll see a bigger commitment to running the football by Auburn in the second half. They'll bring Shivers from the receiver spot. And he's bottled up. Tried to get an extra yard by driving the legs and third down for Auburn. Both plays coming out of the half. The Zone read, inside zone read to get them to a third and short. Do they stick with that or is it time to let Bo Nix use his legs? His extemporaneous ability in the first half got him downfield a couple of times. Once on the touchdown to Canella on fourth down. Fake to Whitlow. Nix is dropped. Sam Renner, the red shirt senior who started as a walk-on, dropped him. Watch the move Renner makes right here. He's the guy that's able to split, spin, get around, and just take care of Nick's in the backfield. I mean, that's a one-on-one -on -one play that he wins. Nick's and Malzahn discussing it as Douglas is back to return the punt and a three and out for Minnesota's defense 
to open the second half after the game began with a gopher interception thrown that looked like a bad sign at the time. They'll go from the 25. Aerial coverage presented by Goodyear. Introducing the newest honorary member of the College Football Hall of Fame, the Goodyear Blimp. More driven. And let's see if this offensive line continues to have its way with this phenomenal defensive line, or does Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator, start adding guys to the mix to try and deal with this rushing attack, bringing his linebackers or bringing a safety down? Rodney Smith just short of the 30-yard line in the arms of K.J. Britt. Well, Kevin Steele talked about the way his defensive line kind of flows and the way that they will deal with this Minnesota offensive line that the linemen essentially become linebackers in a way, but there's not been that freedom well, so far. They're, they're so fast, and they're so quick to take away the outside run. And because they have two studs inside, most teams can't run inside on them. Smith galloping to the 34, third and short for Minnesota. Yeah, it, it's predominantly a zone blocking scheme, sort of elephants on parade, where they just want to get movement and push. And the thought was that Auburn's athletes on defense were going to be able to get some penetration, um, get their hands on offensive linemen, get into space and, and make plays without help from linebackers. That hasn't been the case. The Q, they're really working on Brown inside. He's getting doubled and he's getting cut. He's right here in the middle there. Let's see if they go at him. They just moved him around now. They moved him at the snap. Minnesota runs toward him, and this is very close. It looks like right at the line to gain at the 36 for Ibrahim. That is a first down, Minnesota. And this is right out of the P.J. Fleck playbook. Take your time, run the clock, frustrate the other team. The Jim Tressel playbook. Yep, yep, good point. You That's what it is. You constrictor and, and uh, snuff the life out of this game with a lead. Morgan off the play action. Rolling goes to the second level, and it's incomplete on a dive from the senior Johnson. And that, that's one situation where you would tell him, just take the profit. You had your tight end right in front of you. Just take that easy throw and pick up six, seven yards as opposed to the more difficult throw down there. That's something he'll see on film or they will come back to later and they'll say, just dump it there and it's a great first down play. Honestly, I thought that's where he was going to yeah. go. Me too. And instead, he's got such confidence in Johnson to make every catch after that touchdown in the first half. Smith got by the initial hit, and Derek Brown finished him off. That was McCreary who tried to size him up, but Brown was there. Now this third down, I'm, I'm curious as to whether Bateman will still have the single coverage. You know, that uh, Ibanagani has been you know, giving him all day. And so far, Ignogman, he has been winning that mat matchup, but they've moved him to the other side. He's got McCreary now. And they're going to pressure him yeah. right up at the line. Yeah, and, and if I'm Morgan and I see that, that, that's where I'm looking. There's a safety creeping that direction. Daniel Thomas, the senior, and now he's coming back the other direction. It's an incomplete crossing route looking for Bateman. It was behind him. If this ball is out in front, Bateman has a chance. Just a crossing route. And you see the little pick there with Johnson trying to knock off McCreary. Throw a flag. That's illegal. You can't do that. That, that is offensive that was, pass that, interference. That was a complete block. To be, to be clear. Fun <laughs> time for Minnesota. Tut, who muffed one earlier, awaits this one at the 13-yard line. Auburn has it when we come back after a three and out on their opening second half touch.
We thought we lost everything in that fire. But my independent agent and auto owners made sure we were up and running fast. That's what mattered to us. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. College Football Playoff National Championship Game. Number one LSU, number three Clemson, January 13th at 8 on ESPN. Here in Florida, it is 24-17. Minnesota, Bo Nix and the Auburn offense have the ball. The freshman quarterback who has the name of one Heisman winner for the Auburn Tigers, Bo Jackson. And he's wearing a helmet that is honoring a Heisman winner for Auburn who has passed away just recently. Day after the Iron Bowl, we lost Pat Sullivan, who was such an outstanding player for the Tigers in 1971, a Heisman winner. And this, to honor him today, here at the Outback Bowl. Auburn is changing the tempo to try and, you know, get a little energy, change things up a bit. Nix, far side and a juggle, and indeed he does hang on over at the far side. J.J. Wilson with his 13th catch. He is one of 17 children in his family, J.J. Wilson. There's a lot we haven't seen out of this offense that we normally do. We haven't seen them attack the safeties. We haven't seen, seen the counter. Only seen one jet sweep out of, out of Auburn. Nicks to Williams. How they started this season against Oregon, and Williams is down. Another third down. Minnesota. Oh, boy, a little post-play stuff. Soaring Marin looked like he might have shucked Williams. No flag comes in. Nicks keeps, and he's got eyes for the first down. He does have it. That's a big play for Auburn. Here's after the second down play. Wow. Yeah. It was, was Williams yeah. who laid into him. But it looked like, like uh, actually, sorry, Mar Marin was simply trying to slow down the pace of play, kind of grab him and hold him up a little bit. That's one way to do it. They use the jet sweep action, and it's Booby Whitlow twirling to the 44-yard line. This is one of the more sustained drives for the Tigers so far in this game. Yeah, and a little bit more diversity in it. They came out throwing because Minnesota was playing off, giving them giving them room, and now going back to their their zone read, their inside zone play. It's been more crisp. Yep. Nicks outside again. He's got the tight end, J.J. Wilson, a first down into Minnesota territory. Remember, this is a defense that really is sort of a bend but don't break style. They will give you things in front. They're pretty good tacklers, pretty sure tacklers. They make you make a mistake, and Antoine Winfield is back there. He's one who takes full advantage of any mistake you make. He told us yesterday his goal today was three interceptions. He hasn't seen a ball his way much today as Knicks straight vertically up the pocket then to the outside. He's got a first down and some coaches on the Minnesota sideline are hot. Uh, we've seen Knicks use his legs twice on this drive and Auburn's needed it. We're going to need a lot more out of him running the football before this game is over. His new offensive coordinator, Chad Morris, told us yesterday that Bo Nix has asked him about guys like Taj Boyd, Deshaun Watson, who he coached at Clemson, as Whitlow swung down by Chris Williamson, the redshirt senior who went yesterday. P.J. Fleck was telling us he's so excited to see what this young man does in the future and very sad to see him go. Yeah, we asked him which senior he'll miss the most, and he pointed to Williamson, the transfer from Florida. He said he's grown up the most. And he's a funny cat. He said he brings the spirit every day, and he's got a great sense of humor. Yeah, but Minnesota is locked into recruiting down in the south in Florida and Georgia. They're getting out to different places now. Yeah, Atlanta's finest, Williamson. Fake it to Shivers. Nicks down the middle, incomplete. It ricocheted off the hands of Bo Jackson's nephew, Shedrick. 
Yeah, Bo won't be happy about that one. That's one that Shedrick knows he should have come up with. Both Bows won't be happy about that one. Yeah, uh, true. Now here comes Minnesota with their third down pass rushing package. They bring in three guys who are just racehorses. One job, go get the quarterback. Williams is at the top of the screen. Minnesota typically blitzes the side of the running back. They rush four, and it's incomplete for Williams, who thought he got held by St. Juice. And really good coverage by St. Juice over there. And there is a flag. I thought that Williams lost his footing over there. Flag came in late Pass from the backside there. official. Defense, number 22. The ball be placed at the spot of foul. Automatic. Yeah, Put they down. said 22. It's got to be 25. Yeah. yeah, they tangled up, Rod. And then both lost their feet. The fields yeah. have been a little slick today, but man, St. Juice is a good looking corner, you know, six foot three. Yeah, 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 that's unusual to get that call over there because both guys extended their arms. And usually when there's mutual combat like that, there's not a flag. And the Auburn fans say he got her dude by the neck. This to the sideline, and Williams with a beautiful grab wow. right at the edge. Seth Williams, so reliable, a gain of 17. Wow, what hands. What a catch this is. First and goal, Auburn. Ball comes loose. Whitlow dropped it. And the Auburn offensive line, Prince Tega Winogo, got on top of it. Ruby Whitlow. Ball was exposed. He couldn't hang on to it. Fortunate bounce for Auburn. They put the ball on the ground an awful lot this year. 24th fumble. They've lost 10 of them. Whitlow's patented spin move. Shivers couldn't get in. He had a similar run to the other side against Alabama, but two Gophers hemmed him in. Yeah, he, he's not the biggest guy, but he's awfully powerful. You may recall that in that Alabama game, he ran through a defender and knocked his helmet off. Nix is coming off, by the way, Rod, for this third down and goal. Booby Whitlow, Wildcat. They'll run motion. Whitlow keeps it and jumps in. Touchdown, Booby Whitlow. How about the patience Whitlow shows on this? He waits for it to develop. He's not in a hurry, and once he spots it, there he goes. We don't need to review this one. No, I don't it's think a so. touchdown. Now that drive, the key thing to that drive was the pace. The up-tempo pace that Malzahn went to on that drive changed everything for Aubrey. We've been tied at 3-3, 10-10, 17-17, and 24-24 here in 2020. What a way to ring in 2020. We are tied at 24, Minnesota and Auburn, as we take a look back at our great clips drive recap for the Tigers. And the Auburn offense is back. Bo Nix started five of six on that drive. Then he went to his legs to come up with a big play. Great catch by Williams to get them in the side of the goal line. And then the patient running of Booby Whitlow to get into the end zone. And you got the sense and feel that the rhythm has come back for the Auburn offense. Five of six, 43 yards for Bo Nix. It's interesting watching these two offenses, right? Because Auburn is so clever, so creative. Minnesota is like a bunch of tract houses that all look the same, <laughs> but they do exactly what you want, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's such an entertaining contrast. Oh, we got tract homes don't like you. 20 minutes left. <laughs> Twenty four twenty four in the Outback Bowl 2020 Minnesota and Auburn Big Ten in the SEC as we look at the Bowl Challenge Cup standings brought to you by Progressive and a good start for the SEC at four and one so far Big 12 has struggled. Oh boy one and four. Big Ten SEC going on over on ABC as well with Michigan and Alabama tangling that's a one score game. 
two screen experience a good idea this afternoon on New Year's Day. On first down Minnesota. Smith with a flag in has Johnson and Tyler Johnson to the 35 but will check the marker. Holder offense number 51 10 yard penalty still first down. It's the young man from Jacksonville Curtis Dunlap Jr. Wiping out a 40 yard gain. Oh and they had it set up perfectly and I I don't know that the hold was necessary. Don't know whether that guy likes the call less or his friend less. We saw in the crowd. Gopher fans terribly disappointed. And just when you say it's just machine like offense for Minnesota, they pull it right out of the bag of tricks, but cannot get the game to stick. How do they handle? First and 20 as their new lot in life. It's Morgan to throw behind Demetrius that Douglas. That is a very, very tight window to try to make that throw into. You have a couple of Auburn defenders sitting there. Again, the number one thing for the Auburn defense coming into this ball game: take away that slant. Now they, the Tigers. Are, sorry, Rod. Go ahead, Q. No, I was just going to say they're bringing fresh legs here. Marlon Davidson, Derek Brown off the bench, and here comes some pass rush. And Brown is now on the, the wide side of the field as a tackle. Maybe a little bit better advantage for him to avoid a double team. Big Cat Bryant looks like he's got smoke coming out of his ears. He couldn't get around the corner, though. And Tyler Johnson sets up a third down and doable. Yeah, they, they caught errors, uh, caught Auburn in a little bit of a zone there. So that slant was open right behind the linebackers who, you know, bought that fake on that run pass option, opened up the middle of the field. You don't get a whole lot of zone defense out of Auburn. Big third down for Minnesota. Third and seven. Gophers are such a good third down team for the year. Tanner Morgan struggled today. Screen for Johnson had a lot of air under it. And Johnson is just short. It looked as though if that came out a little hotter, he had more room to go. Yeah, the timing was off on that. You can't go here. Oh, P.J. Flag is can't thinking about it. You can't go here. You're backed up. That and last play, Rod, a great effort play from Marlon Davidson and Derek Brown as, as they were rushing the quarterback. Yep. Pivoted and then hustled it down to prevent the first down. Just a great, relentless effort. Yeah, Q, they disrupted the timing on that because uh, Tanner Morgan wasn't able to deliver that ball quickly. And a flag comes down on the punt. It's going to be a false start. Just the sixth penalty of our game. False start. Offense. Left side of the line. Five-yard penalty. Still. Fourth down. Hey, you never like when they get an entire side of your line. Pick a number. <laughs> Anybody. Everybody. Yeah, yeah. But but what what an effort by this defense and up front in particular. You think about what Marlon Davidson has been doing lately and what Brown did. That last play, as Q mentioned, was disrupted because of their efforts. You're going to see him a lot of these guys on the defensive side playing on Sundays and Mondays and Thursdays. Another juggle for Todd. And he's down to the 35. All right, we're going to take a look at today's PlayStation player impact rating as a marker has come in on the punt return. We'll check the marker at the end of the play. Let's see. After the play was over, dead ball, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, receiving team number 21. 15-yard penalty, Auburn football, first down. So damaging for Auburn. Field position backs them up dramatically. Smoke Monday. Yeah. Yeah, needless. Yeah, unnecessary. Great names on this Auburn team. Smoke Monday. You got smoke Bo and a big cat. Booby. Booby Whitlow. Big cat. And uh, Derek Brown as well, who's a big enough name. Marlon Davidson as well. Is there
PlayStation player impact rating. Davidson, you see 45 pressures. That's hurries and pressures and quarterback knockdowns. Anything that hustles up the quarterback. This is a wide open man. Schwartz across the 35 for an Auburn first down. Yeah. So we talked about Marlon Davidson and the other five, Derek Brown. Davidson creating this offensive possession along with Brown, and we'll see if Auburn can pay it off. Yeah. Booby Whitlow, second down. Didn't you get the sense this third quarter that the Auburn defense, Marlon Davidson in particular, starting to really impact you know, the, the Minnesota offense and the Auburn offense now in rhythm, in control a little bit. And you see how damaging penalties can be yep. to a ship that has to be so tight for P.J. Fleck mm -hmm. in Minnesota. They don't get penalized much, but when they do, it's a trouble spot. Whitlow carving the defense for a first down. That was a nifty run as Winfield finally had to take him down. Look, this is a senior-laden offensive line for Auburn. They call this game their last ride, and they're starting to get it going. Good double team inside, allowing Whitlow to find that hole and cut to his left and pick up that first. I didn't quite pick up the first down. Patience by Whitlow. Malzahn said he, we need him to get the tough yards when the game's on the line. He's been that guy for Auburn at points this year. He's driven back for a loss of about two on that carry, the sophomore. Yeah, Q, I, I, I'm still waiting for Auburn to get Williams in the slot and attack the safeties. Yeah, he's top of the screen right now. Let's see maybe if Schwartz, five and blue, maybe on a jet or a crossing route where he can get some yards after catch. Nix looks the other way. Pressure came from Otamewa, and this is incomplete to the sideline. We wanted Jackson third down. Minnesota's got to be happy with that, forcing Knicks to his left. His completion percentage drops when he leaks out to the left. Much stronger to the right. Big third down and 11. And again, where is Williams? You get him in the right matchup. He's top of the screen. He's the one you want. They bring in all those defensive ends. Tayon Devers, Boye Mafe, the money package for Minnesota on the defensive line. Here comes Coughlin. Two free runners. Nix has to tuck it. He lost the ball out of bounds. And it's fourth down and about nine for Auburn from near midfield. You think about it here if your Gus Malzahn? Nope. Not at all. Nope. He thought about it earlier, but this spot I agree with you. You're not you're not gonna play that game right now. No, I'm just waiting for our Australian kicker to come on the field, of which we have what 47, 48 of in power five? Yeah, it's in the forties. All right, so we have a national punting crisis because <laughs> we can't develop you know, punters here. Rod once again is import export. What, expert. Did, the, what did the coaches tell us? Oh, oh. High snap. And he's going to throw it. Incomplete, so they do end up going for it. Down the middle of the field for Shanker. No flag. Wow. Shanker was being held around the hips the entire way down the field. And Gus that's Malzahn's arguing that very point right now. Watch the replay here on the coverage. Sending your screen. 47. Yeah. Now again, remember, touching a receiver, having a hand on him, is not pass interference. It is a turn, it is a impeding or so, so you can't get a flag by just having your hand on someone. They'll run it on first down after the turnover, and Ibrahim is right around the line to gain. That's the end of the first quarter. Third quarter. So four ties in the game. Gus Malzahn still arguing. P.J. Fleck has moved along, and so will we when we come back.
Winner gets that trophy here in Florida, the Outback Bowl, 24-24 as we go along to the fourth quarter. Thanks for joining us, Jason Benetti, Rod Gilmore, Quinn Kesnick. Look, Minnesota wins its first nine games. Auburn plays one of the toughest schedules in the country, and they clash, and we've got awesome results so far. A big SEC, Big Ten matchup with both teams clearly motivated for this. There is no question about Auburn being into this ball game. This was a business trip for them, not a reward, and they're showing you they're totally into it. Auburn is the only team in the country to play five of the top 13 in the college football playoff this year. That's a first down for Minnesota. I, I thought it was interesting that Gus Malzahn wanted to talk about the lesson that they learned from losing to Central Florida a couple of years ago and said they, at that point they said bowl games were no longer rewards. They were business trips and they would treat the practices accordingly. Now, the danger in that as Green's going to come in and play some Wildcat. Morgan split out up top. Green keeps it. And Green <laughs> extends the play down to the 31. Shoulder first. Yeah, there's 240 pounds for you. The, the danger in making your bow game a business trip is that all that work can turn off some players. Yeah. So if you don't have complete buying with the players, you can get a lackluster performance. But when you have a Pied Piper, like Derek Brown, everybody buys in that it is a business trip and it's not a reward. The beach and everything else can wait until later. Yeah, they believe the reward is going out with another win for the guys on their team who feel like brothers. Is what Brown has said, Davidson among others. NFL talent all over this defense. Morgan plays out oh, the fake as Ibrahim gets driven back. What a play by Brown. He pushes his man into the backfield and then turns around and goes and makes the tackle. Derek Brown, who comes in with school squat records, he has three strip sacks this year. I mean, all sorts of stuff. Can you imagine him as a high school basketball player, by the way? Because he was. That's a tank down low. Anything he wants to do. Another handoff and a stone wall in the middle of that defense. Ibrahim got drilled. It looked like KJ Britt got in there and popped him just short of the line to gain. Now I know this has been one of your pet peeves, the spotting with the left foot or the right foot in the age of technology. Well, you see so many times it's so close and one guy's got Official it one place and one guy's got it injury. another as, as Britt is down it's going to be short of the line to gain and it's going to be fourth down and one when we come back aerial coverage provided by Goodyear the best part of every kickoff is the drive that comes next go further with Goodyear more driven Fourth down Minnesota, and the Gophers are going for it early fourth quarter. Are they? Looks like it. They got the offense out on the field. Are they going for it, or are they simply attempting to draw Auburn offsides? Let us see. Now remember, when you want to do something like this, the guy you don't run to is number five. Now here comes the eye backfield. Tight ends galore. Morgan steps back. Well, two steps back means you're not going, right? Oh, he is going. Oh. Straight ahead into the teeth of the defense, and it depends on the spot. Did he lose the ball? There's the whistle. The pile kept moving. And let's see what's unearthed. How do you know? It's tough. Initial push didn't look good. I thought there was no. a secondary push later in the play that maybe cross the uh, first down marker. And remember, the call on the field is so important here because it would be so difficult based on the oh, scroll. Not a great the spot. Is that the snap was muffed, recovered by a member of the offensive team. We have the spot. We will have a measurement. So let's see. Yeah, so the ball was lost. I thought I did see it come loose there. Gus Malzahn looks perplexed on the sideline. 
So first of all, we got to see what the spot's going to be on the field, if it's first down or not. And you would imagine, very likely, whatever the call on the field is won't be overturned, but we'll see. Well, that's our marker. That's not official. Yeah, the yellow line is not official. But by our marker, that would be a first down. We sit and wait, and he's just short by a fingernail. And that's why it's not official. Let's watch the snap again as Auburn gets the hold. Yep. Lost it right off the bat. And couldn't tell where the ball was after that. I mean, you got no shot. You'd have yeah. to have a computer chip in the ball to know where the official spot was. Which might be a fine idea for marking first down. For Minnesota fans right now, certainly. So here comes Williams and the Auburn run game that's turned aside on first down. We, we talked about explosive plays for the Auburn offense that when they're humming normally, nine plays of 20 yards or more a game is what they look for. They have two of those today. Only two. You talk a lot about motivation. Marlon Davidson's eyes tell the story about how much Auburn cares about this game and how important a January 1st Outback Bowl is to him and his defensive cohorts. Shoulder blocking teammates on the sideline as third down is coming up off the run from DJ Williams. Look, you know, just watch and listen to some of the hitting that's going on out there, and that'll tell you how much these players care about this game. And each other. This is the Minnesota pass rush. They bring in these guys on third down. They call it their money package. Four DNs. Mafe and Coughlin together at the bottom. Mafe backs into coverage. On the side, Knicks rolls out on, and Mafe played it well. It's incomplete as Otamewa came from the backside with the pressure. He had nowhere to go with the ball. That's good pressure affecting the quarterback. That, that pass rush package we talked about came in and did his job and now Minnesota has to feel good about a three and out they got defensively and a team that knows how to sap time off the clock Minnesota will get the ball back Douglas fades to the sideline Demetrius Douglas yanked out by the shirt. That was Daniel Thomas on the coverage. Five Eastern time. Stay right here. Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual as Oregon battles Wisconsin and then Georgia and Baylor in the All-State Sugar Bowl. Both games also available on the ESPN app. And I go back to the tape we watched of Auburn and Oregon. Yep. Game one this year. You think of First of all, how great it is when two power teams decide to play each other early in the year. And second of all, how much it changed the course of both of those teams early in the season, and especially Bo Nix, the freshman. We, we have to respect those games and honor those teams that play that. We want more games like that. We shouldn't penalize them. Morgan loads it up. Down the middle. Wide open Johnson. Tyler Johnson, touchdown! He torched Smoke Monday on a 73-yard touchdown. It all begins with the pass protection. They go max pro. Look at all the guys protecting Morgan. And when you play man coverage and you can't handle Johnson, you got a problem. But it all began up front. They went max pro to make sure that Morgan had plenty of time to get that done. I go back to what Rashad Bateman called Tyler Johnson yesterday. 
Somewhat in jest, somewhat not. Savior Ty, King of the North, hits six for Minnesota in the fourth. You don't think it'll happen to you, and you surely don't think it'll happen twice. I've lost two homes in my lifetime. First, it was a fire. My agent was right there and helped me rebuild. Then the tornado hit and destroyed everything again. Both times, my independent agent and auto owners took care of me like someone takes care of family. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. The Outback Bowl, brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. Hurry in January 2nd for your free bloomin' onion or coconut shred. Full bloom for the Minnesota offense right now on the 11th catch for Tyler Johnson, who now is the all-time Golden Gopher touchdown receiving guy in history. He did it earlier with that wild catch in the back of the end zone. He adds to his lead, number 36 of his career. And what a farewell for that soon-to-be graduating senior. And isn't it appropriate that a guy from North Minneapolis gets that record? Tremendously. He stayed home to play for his city and to play for his family. And now he's got Minnesota holding the lead. Igbenogany off the spin as we go back to the touchdown for Johnson. Yeah, really smart thing by Minnesota, getting Johnson in the slot. He looks up and he sees a free safety in Smoke Monday. He says, oh, really? A free safety? Man to man in the middle wide open? Look how he crosses him over, gives him the old, I'm going outside. No, I'm not. You go outside. I got the middle of the field for the post. It is wide open. Morgan sees it. That's a really well-designed play. Getting Tyler Johnson on the free safety with that slot position. Design roll for Nix to Schwartz on the sideline. This Minnesota team is so well connected. When you talk to, we've talked to three separate sets of defensive coaches, and they all have said they know what they do yep. and they do it well. Yeah, not, not complicated, not a whole lot of moving parts to it, but they do it over and over and over and they do it well. Will Hastings slams on the brakes. He's got a first down short of midfield. Felt like Auburn offensively has been at their best today when they've upped the pace, used tempo, moved quickly. The problem there, Rod, is they continue to substitute. They, they're so versatile in their formations, their personnel packages, that anytime they substitute, it kind of slows things down. Yep. Booby Whitlow to the 50-yard line. And look, Auburn trailing by seven. They want to win this game very badly, but there's extra value with a sophomore tailback in Whitlow and a freshman quarterback in Bo Nix. And what you can get confidence-wise as a springboard into next year in a team that they think can really compete for an SEC championship. I think that's right. And a schedule next year that won't be as bad as this year. Nix pulls it back, and he slings, and it's incomplete, nearly yeah. intercepted by St. Just. I, I think he misread the coverage. He was thinking that he was going to have Williams over there, single coverage, but it was really double coverage, a two-deep zone with St. Juice underneath, and he dropped back there and almost picked that off. Seth Williams, a reaction of frustration on the incompletion. Auburn box down at midfield for the moment. And look who is sneaking around the area where Williams is. Winfield. And here he comes on the blitz, Winfield. He got the hands in the face of Knicks. And it's Antoine Winfield Jr., the All-American, with a fist in the air. Well, you knew he would make a play at a critical moment. You don't make All-American unless you do things like that. Look at the way he just destroys the pass protection. We asked him yesterday what he wants to do that his father never did, and his answer was win a Super Bowl, and it came out immediately. I wouldn't doubt him with anything. 
really was that, was that a lean towards coming out after this game? Ah, there you go, Rod. The Gophers hope certainly not. But Antoine Winfield Jr. so fun to watch as this goes bounding into the end zone for a touchback. Just the third this year for Sipos. Hey, Inside the College Football Playoff is now streaming on ESPN Plus. Episode 2 now available. Behind the scenes, following the days, right after the semifinal, LSU and Clemson getting ready to face each other in the national championship game January 13th. What do you like? Uh, that LSU offense is so scary, and I know Trevor Lawrence had that look in his eye at the end of the Ohio State game. I'd take LSU by three. You? I just... I can't go against Trevor Lawrence. I don't I don't dispute that call at all. But Joe Burrow. It'll be a New great Orleans. game. Oof. Rodney Smith stood up and dropped. Owen Popo, the freshman linebacker, with a beautiful open field tackle. Auburn is set defensively going forward with this group of linebackers. And they're going to lose. Brown and some tremendous defensive line guys, but they've got some other ones waiting in the wings. They'll be a good defensive team next year as well. Youth movement certainly, but some leaders still remain. And now Minnesota so effective at milking clock. Slant route. Johnson. He's got more slant catches than anybody in the nation, and he ends up at the 40-yard line. That was the run-pass option. Morgan decides after the snap whether he's going to give the ball. Look, there's the fake. He's reading that wing, that, that overhang player, and then he decides, ah, the slant is there. I will throw it because that guy came up to play the run. And he slides down inbounds just in case. Top well. Keep the clock moving. 12 catches, 204 yards. The farewell tour is memorable for Tyler Johnson. Well, remember how the game started for him. Minnesota's offense had an interception on the opening drive. Well, Tyler Johnson, when the game began, was one of the outside receivers, and he was having trouble getting off the line of scrimmage with the press coverage. They moved him into the slot gave him more room and it's resulted in a huge day for him and now Minnesota will let the clock roll and roll inconvenient at the very least when you're an opponent on defense against Minnesota's offense and you're trailing Smith out of the backfield, whirls, and drives ahead for a first down, Minnesota. That's nothing more than a long handoff. It's essentially a running play. Get the ball out to Smith quickly out of the backfield. Stay in bounds, keep the clock running, continue to frustrate everybody dressed in blue on the other sideline. And at some point, when do you take the chances if you're Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator? Although he's an aggressive play caller anyway. He'll bring it soon, but not yet. Play action Morgan. Now he does take the short one, and that's chopped down immediately. Span forward, undercut by Thomas, the senior. Originally a commit to Minnesota, Daniel Thomas, who ended up at the very late stages of recruiting, staying close to home at Auburn, makes the stop to set up second and 11. That's right. He had just the Minnesota offer and came up to visit and was going to go here until he got the last minute offer out of Auburn. Second down run, so Matt Simon, the de facto offensive coordinator, Kurt Shiraka leaves, goes to Penn State, and Simon has called an outstanding game so far for the Gophers, Quinn. Yeah, basically, he is stamping his resume with this game plan and with the success, I think about 31 points on this Tiger defense. What did LSU score against Auburn? The 23? They had their worst offensive game of the year against Auburn. Absolutely, and, and Simon has really 
Hunt's shown well in terms of getting the inside run game going, the RPO. He's taking his shots. They've been creative. They've kept Auburn uncomfortable all game long. Here's the slot for Johnson. Rodney Smith, third down run, and now they're in striking distance. An intriguing decision coming up for P.J. Fleck. Go fourth for down and how much? About one and a half, it looks like. Well, he said he was going to be aggressive. There's the discussion right now. If you go for it and you don't get it, you give midfield to Auburn. Reading lips, it looked like he just said he's going to call timeout when the play clock gets down to one. Smart. Burn some more clock and then talk it through. If you have your fourth down play that you have a lot of confidence in, then you run it. But if that fourth down play is one where you got to block number three or number five, you go, eh. Time out. I don't know about that. Maybe we should punt. Time out. Time out. We'll see what he chooses when we come back. Minnesota by seven. Being a person is complicated, but we figure it out. In fact, people are always doing impressive things. So how come all these people who do wildly challenging things feel like they can't do their taxes? We're talking about a bunch of baby birthing, office discoing, zero gravity tooth brushing, late night chainsaw sculpting, dog walking people. We believe people can be good at anything. Yes, even taxes. Into it, TurboTax. To look at our what's in store this postseason brought to you by Macy's. It's the national championship game of the college football playoff. LSU and Clemson January 13th, 8 Eastern on ESPN. And if it's anything like this, you're going to stick around for the last moment. Fourth down, Minnesota. They've scored on a fourth down and gotten stopped. They don't have very many fourth down plays left. They've used their best ones. I, you're up seven. I don't think you go for it here. I think you got to have points if you can in any way. We'll see. Maybe try and draw them off sides. They do snap it. Morgan with pressure. Oh, what, what a catch. catch. Bryce Webber. What a catch. He had the touchdown on the fourth down earlier. It's his fifth of his career. What are the odds? that they had two fourth down pass plays to him. I'm not so certain that they just didn't adjust that on the sideline. With Jake Paulson, the starter out, Bryce with him out of nowhere. Might have his own lake named after him by the end of today. First down run, Ibrahim across the 25. Davidson had the pressure. Auburn had what they wanted. What a catch. Morgan gave him a chance. He put it up there to give him a chance to get it. And all the pressure was coming in from Davidson. And Morgan still managed to get it off. With him nearly got tied up on the line of scrimmage he did a great job disengaging from the auburn defender to get himself out on the route and the trajectory of the pass gave him time to get under it second down and a marker comes in on the back end of the play with 221 and the clock is still rolling so they're going to have to reset the clock by about five seconds you'd think Holding offense, number 60, 10-yard penalty, second down. And so now you have Please questions about clock. field goal range. Two minutes yep. and 22 seconds, and the game clock will start on the snap. That was John Michael Schmitz on the hold. So Michael Lance standing and waiting. And Gopher fans who just can't really get used to the heat in January with all their cold weather gear on from up in Minneapolis and there you see what PJ Fleck has told us he's comfortable with in terms of distance to make it a two score game.
Ibrahim nearly kept upright, and he's down to the 30. Time for Auburn to start thinking about their timeouts. Timeouts and clock most critical on this drive. Yep, Auburn's got to start conserving the clock. Jason, you called it. The way Auburn's up at the line of scrimmage, nine men in the box. If you can crease it offensively, if you can find the seam, you're gone. Timeout. There's no second level. Auburn. Timeout. P.J. Fleck is incensed on the sideline. Timeout, Auburn with 2.18 to go and a dandy outback pull. What's up, Peloton? Let's go, team. Come on. The Peloton tread is more than just miles. Awesome, you guys. Ten seconds. Discover a stronger runner within and keep achieving your goals with weekly programs and world-class instructors to coach your progress. 20 seconds. Come on. Run further and feel stronger on the low-impact, shock-absorbing slap belt. Yes, team. Jog it out. With challenging classes designed for any finish line. Awesome, awesome job. SVP has Sports Center tonight after the Sugar Bowl post-game reactions, plus a full Rose Bowl breakdown, Oregon and Wisconsin coming up next, and a special edition of Bad Beats featuring the worst of 2019, and who knows, maybe this game at some point, too. We got a lot of time left. Lance on the sideline is hit from 40 today. Do they try and set it up for him here on third down? Yeah, I think you're thinking, Phil, go, not first down. You need about seven yards to give him a fair shot at it. Ibrahim broke one tackle. Ibrahim dives Holy forward, moly. and he rolls for a Minnesota first down. Auburn came with the pressure, and the pressure was inside. You'll see all the guys coming, and they managed to get outside around them. Great blocking on the edge to seal Auburn inside. Big Cat Bryant never really had a shot at him, though he was close. And P.J. Fleck is amped. First 10-win season for Minnesota since 1905. Look, think about this. Are they going to check the spot? Let's see. Coach Fleck on the near side annoyed at the setting of the play clock. If you read lips, yeah, or listen pick it closely, up off my mic. He said, "Review it." I'm standing right next to him. He wants it reviewed. ACC crew. Gus Malzahn getting a conversation on the other side. But they're going to go ahead and row the boat for now as a placeholder until we see what happens. They're rowing they're, the boat pretty good, Jason. You hear them? We, we have thousands of crew members yelling, row, row, row. Some thought they'd need a bigger boat for this one. Turns out it was just fine for now. Russ Malzahn holding court on the far side. Let's check. Please reset the game clock to 2 minutes and 11 seconds, and the play clock will be set to 25 seconds. The game clock will start on my signal. P.J. Fleck had that look on his face when, when you're yep. doing math in your head and your mouth moves a little bit. He was doing the math in his he, head to see if that was right. Yeah. He's ahead of him. He's like, I'm good with that now. He's happy. He said, yeah, I'll yep. chest bump you to, yep. to the linesman. <laughs> they got it right. Auburn doesn't use the timeout. Minnesota will wait. Ibrahim charging to the 16. Auburn's got to use these timeouts. They'll be taking them time home out. otherwise. Auburn, their second time out of the half. 30 seconds, time out. Hey, don't forget, Oregon and Wisconsin coming up next. And then Georgia and Baylor, top eight teams if you want a bigger playoff. 
this is what you might have seen early on. You know, New Year's Day is awesome. Nice little appetizer to get you going, and then the Rose Bowl is really going to fill you up and finish it off with a Sugar Bowl. What oh. a beautiful day of college football. Oh. And, and the wonder of college football is you have two programs, Auburn, who was going for its 15th 10-win season. They're so used to it. They want to win national championships, and they're such a sturdy, wonderful brand in college football. And then you have P.J. Fleck, the disruptor, yep. putting together this program for Minnesota. Historically great early on, but nothing like this recently. I was going to say, if these guys at Minnesota win this game, they will be legends in the state of Minnesota. Ibrahim squeezing through, showing the power, and a first down, Minnesota to put it away. Results of the plays in first down. Think about what the reunion is going to be in 10, 15, 20 years for these players and this coaching staff, and they talk about the 2019 season and place and facing Auburn and SEC power in this game and winning 11 games. Think about those reunions, what those are going to be like. And their leader, Rod, at those reunions, the quarterback, Tanner Morgan, who was one lack of a coaching change away from playing in a group of five for Western Michigan with P.J. Fleck. It was a phone call. It was a change in route from Kalamazoo further west and to Minneapolis. And he becomes the guy who's changed the trajectory of the Minnesota program in a major way. Not big enough, not strong enough, not a big enough arm, not fast enough, just a winner. A winner in high school and a winner in Minnesota. And for P.J. Fleck, I remember when he was at Western Michigan, they said, well, that, that style will never work for a Power 5 school. Well, let me tell you, coaching the person first, relationship-based coaching, I think it's the wave of the future. And guys, all of that is exceedingly true facing a well-stocked possible playoff team in Auburn if it bounces correctly. One of the toughest games Minnesota's had all season, if not the toughest, and they've put away the Auburn Tigers. And, and listen, there is no question that Auburn was dialed in for this game. Yes. No question about it at all. But Minnesota made Auburn uncomfortable. They played keep away. Auburn had 22 offensive plays in the first half. They ran nine rushing plays in the first half. That is not the way Auburn likes to play. And it took them out of their style and they had trouble getting back. They looked like they got some of it in the third quarter, but Minnesota bounced right back. Normally, when you row the boat successfully, you don't end up underwater, but not today for P.J. Fleck and the Gophers. 31-24 in the Outback Bowl upset. Downstairs, Quint Kesnick with P.J. Fleck. You're soaked. You're chilly. What made the difference? The kids, the players. They've had so much adversity this entire year, from Casey O'Brien to losing coordinators and coaches. We had a lot of quality control guys step up into big roles. Our players kept the faith all year. It's just been a special year for our program, special year for our university, uh, the entire state of Minnesota, and I'm so proud of our coaching staff for the resolve they've showed in the last few weeks. What emotions are you dealing with right now? Just so proud of the players. Just so proud of our kids. Uh, just so proud to be a gopher. Um, it just shows you this program's going. You know, we talked about we get a chance to play against one of the big blue bloods. And we want to be a blue blood one day. We've got to beat blue bloods. And we're just uh, very humbled to be at the Outback Bowl and uh, very proud of the victory. That's a heck of a football team. Gus Malzahn's one of the best coaches in America. I don't have much, I don't have any more respect than anybody in the country than that guy. Great season, coach. Congratulations. Congratulations.
For Marlon Davidson and the Auburn defense, a loss by seven. But for the senior, Tyler Johnson, for the Golden Gophers, our Capital One player of the game, a Minnesota Bowl record. He's got more receiving touchdowns than anybody in Gopher history, Rod. And